got my timer going. So let's pick up there. I know the mass flow rates. Right, we've established I know the mass flow rates. I know I've got an enthalpy change. So how do we find enthalpy? Well, what is our substance? The first question, whenever I need to find a property, what is our substance? Our substance is liquid water. So I could go look up enthalpy values for saturated liquid water at the given temperatures, and that would get me pretty good. That would be just fine. Uh, the problem statement was nice enough, though, to give me specific heats. So you know what? I'm going to use those. Uh, you don't have to. Again, you could go look up specific, sorry, look up the enthalpy for saturated liquid at these given temperatures, um, and that would get us, you, I think you would find very much the same answer or very similar. Uh, it would be an interesting exercise. If you wanted to practice, that's a nice thing you could do, practice on your own. As I said, I'm going to use the specific heat. So from, for the cold pipe, that's 1, 2. I'm going to take the specific heat times, and this is 1 minus 2, so I'm going to say T1 minus T2 here. <clears throat> Plus M dot 3 times specific heat from 3 to 4. That's the hot pipe. Times, and again, this is 3 minus 4, so this is going to be T3 minus T4. <clears throat> that equals 0. So what are we looking for again? E, what the heck are we trying to do? Well, we wrote that right here at the very beginning. We're trying to find T4. All right. <clears throat> so if we try to try, blah, blah, if we try to find T4, we have to do some algebra here. <clears throat> okay. So let's see. I'm going to move this to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to move this term to the other. Um, isolate T4. I'm, th I'm thinking in my head here. Now I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave this on this side of the equation. I'm going to move these guys over here. And so I'm going to use, move this term over here. Let's just do this. <clears throat> since we're not in class, I might skip a little more algebra in class, but since we're not in class, you know, somebody's just going to write in the comments, hey, what, you, you put the negative sign in the wrong place. You know, let's, let's just do some algebra by hand. <clears throat> do a little, show a few extra steps than I might show in class. And that's okay. This is C sub P, sorry. Blabbing instead of thinking about what I'm writing. Okay, so I've moved this term to this side of the equation. That flips the sign on this difference thing. So now it's T4 minus T3 when it's on the right-hand side of the equation. Uh, I'm going to distribute this out. So this is going to be M C sub P3 4 T4 minus M C sub P, 3, 4, T3, and this is M3, M3, okay, I'm going to move this one over, <clears throat> so let's do this, it's going to be M dot times C sub P, 1, 2, T1 minus T2, M dot 1, add this over here, plus M dot 3, C sub P, 3, 4, T3, Trying to isolate T4 here. So I've moved this over, moved this to this side of the equation, added it over, and I'm going to divide by this M dot 3 C sub P3 4. And that should isolate T4 by itself. L12, I know it's a little off your screen, I apologize. L12, page 2. <coughs> Okay. All right. So, I think we've got everything. T4 is my only unknown, and we we know both M dots, we know both specific heats, and we know the temperatures. <clears throat> All right. You could leave these in Celsius, I think. It, we might just go ahead and convert T3 to Kelvin just to be safe. T3 is, is 100 degrees C. We'll convert it to 373 Kelvin. These two are going to be okay because I'm taking their difference. Right? So it's going to be... So we said M dot... It'll be a big quantity. On top, it's going to be M dot 1. M dot 1, we said, is 0 0.6 kilograms per second. 0 0.6 kilograms per second. Multiply by C to P. <coughs> 
do that. Okay, so P12, we said was 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Multiply by T1 minus T2. T1 is 15. 15. T2 is 45. Difference in Celsius is a difference in Kelvin. <coughs> Add to it, and I'm going to run out of room. Add to it 3 kilograms per second. That's m.3 down here. C sub P for 3, 4. 4.19 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And multiply by T3. And multiply by T3. 373 Kelvins. Divide the whole thing by this M dot 3, that's 3 kilograms per second. And divide the whole thing by C sub P, 3, 4, that's 4.19 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Now, if we look at the units there, Always, first thing you should do is look at your units. So on top, the kelvins are going to go away. The kilograms are going to go away. It's the same units on both on all of these terms, right? The kelvins are going to go away. The kilograms are going to go away. I'm left with kilojoules per second on top. On bottom, the kilograms are going to go away. I'm left with kilojoules per second per kelvin. So I've got kilojoules per second on top, kilojoules per second per Kelvin on bottom. That's going to leave me with 1 over per Kelvin, 1 over 1 over Kelvin, right? which is just going to be Kelvins. The denominator of the denominator becomes the numerator. All right, numerically. Whew. <clears throat> Let's look numerically. Mm, let's do this. 15 minus 45 is just going to be minus 30. Minus 30 times 4.18 times 0.6. <clears throat> it's minus 75.24. Um, that's going to be plus 3 times 4.19 times 3.73. Okay. <clears throat> 40, 6, 88.6. Units on both of those are going to be, we said kilojoule per second on both of those. That's the numerator. Let's double check this one. 4.18. Yeah, that's right. Times 30 minus 30. Yeah, that, that'd be all right. Times 0.6. It's not very much of it. Okay. The denominator is going to be 3 times 4.19. This is 12.57 kilojoules per second and also per kelvin. So again, the kilojoules per second is going to go away. Uh, I've got per 1 over per kelvin, so kelvin's going to go to the top. Um, let's invert this and multiply it by quantity 4688.6 minus 75.24. Close parentheses, divide 367, that's Kelvin, minus 373. <laughs> Plus 373, that's not right. Minus 273, that's right. 94 degrees C. Now, does that make sense? Let's think about it. 94 degrees C. I've got... I've got cold water coming in at 15. It's going out at 45. So a 30 degree jump for the cold stream. And for the hot stream, I'm going in at 100 and I'm coming out at 94. Does that make sense? What's different between the two streams? 
pause it and think about that. Why does that make sense? It does make sense, actually. But why? Why does that make sense for the hot stream to only drop four deg six degrees, but the cold stream jumps 30 degrees? Why the difference? Pause it. All right, what do you think? What's different? The mass flow rate. I have five times the mass for the hot stream. The specific heat is almost the same, so that's not the difference. The difference is the mass flow rate. I have five times the mass, so I would expect one-fifth the temperature difference, which is what I have. I've got six degrees for the hot stream. I've got 30 degrees for the cold stream, and that's my difference. <coughs> Pretty cool, huh? All right. So let's see here. Oh, so if you wanted to do it, I mentioned back over here, I said you, you have two options, right? You could do two separate systems where you have heat transfer between them. And I actually have a solution here. So pause it if you need to look at that. But again, we're just saying for the cold stream, there's heat coming into it, and you can find the enthalpy change, MC to P times the enthalpy change. Um, and that'll give you the QN, because you know all this, okay? So that'll give you the QN for the cold water. The QN for the cold water, right? The QN for the cold water is going to be the heat out by the hot water. And so you can solve it the same way here and get the same number we did doing one big system. Either way works. That's pretty neat. All right. Okay, there's another one here. Um, I'm betting you guys are tired of watching videos. The solution to this one is in here. Um, feel free to look at this. Okay, I'm just... I, I, I think both of us are probably tired. You're probably not going to get 100% out of me. This one has actually got an electrical power coming in. So you've got two masses coming in. You've got a mass going out. And you've got a work term. You've got an electrical power coming in. So feel free to work this one out. The solution in here, um, ask me if you have questions, but I think that's probably going to be plenty for, for both of us. I'm starting to lose my voice, and I know you guys probably get tired of watching videos, so let's just let's stop there. Ask me if you have questions. Send me an email. Comment down below. Let's get you straightened out, and let's be ready for the next exam when it comes, which won't be too far off. This one, Don't let this one sneak up on you. All right, guys. Stay safe out there. See you soon. Bye-bye.